Hello everybody. So as promised, I uh, will show you how I put on my belted plaid or belted plaid, Felu Moor or Big Kilt or Felun uh, Rakan, so tartan wrap. So this is my um, 13 ounce Kennedy Modern wool um, plaid. It's four yards long, double width. So what I usually use is my bed. So it's just a double size bed. And here's the kilt, or the, the blanket, necessarily. Um, I'm going much slower than normal so you can see what's going on. Um, you will also see that I've got some changes happening. I've got a tie here, and I've got, I think, one and a half belt loops on. Um, I haven't finished it yet, so that's why it's not done. So I'm going to somewhat messily just throw the plate over there, then more neatly, I lay, so this is where my knees are going to go. I lay this edge very close to the edge of the bed. Then I take my arm and use the distance between my elbow and my fingertips. Roughly, this is not exact, but from the edge over and whatever line my fingertips hit, that's going to be kind of the end of one of my aprons. So then I just pull it here um, again, if you look here and here, you see I've sewed in only one belt loop, and this is the beginning of another. Um, that's not done, so don't ignore that, please, for now. Um, so this line here is where my fingertips ended. So I will then take this and use that roughly to pleat everything else. So end here on the bottom edge of the kilt. And then my other hand is wherever it's comfortable. Um, you do not have to do this. So watch this. You don't have to do this and then do that. That's nice and neat. And for those people who have a bit of OCD, maybe that's what you want to do. But that takes forever. So I don't even bother with that. So I'm using that rough kind of line there. So here, pick it up at the bottom and just somewhat here, pull over. line up as I go. I often find it very useful, in this tartan's case, to use any of these red lines here to help me make everything roughly straight. Now, you may be asking yourselves, well, what about everything up here? And that's, it, this stuff doesn't matter because this will be above the belt. The belt will be about here-ish and it's just going to dangle and fall anyway. So that doesn't matter. Of course, when I go slowly, then I start obsessing over minor details. But normally when I put it on, I don't worry about it this much. All right, that looks about, you can go one more. It doesn't really matter anyway. So here we go. You'll see that I've got roughly everything kind of lined up. It's not perfect and I don't personally care myself, but if you did, you could just take each pleat and pull it in line, make it nicer, more neat to your level of interest. But that's what I do. Um, you'll notice that this is going to be one apron. This part over the bed on this side will be an, another apron. And this is my pleated section. A note on the pleated section. The wider this pleated section is, the more the kilt will flare in the back. The narrower this pleated section is, the less it will flare out in the back. I have tried making this pleated section maybe from like here to here, so quite narrow, just as an experiment. And I don't like how it sits and feels. It feels more like a tube kind of around me. This, to me, this for this tartan feels good. So, now I've got these two belts. This belt here is, um, uh, old belt I got maybe a decade ago with a pair of shorts and it's got two D-rings on it 
uh, it's made of fabric. Now, in the past, what I would do is kneel down on my floor and take the belt and push it through under the kilt that way. I don't do that anymore. I just throw it. And then I lie down on the bed. So, where you sit is ultimately your preference. Remember that, at least according to historical imagery and records that we have, the bottom of the kilt almost always sat somewhere between mid-thigh and top of the knee. Having it longer than that can inhibit movement and whatever the logic is, but the historical imagery we have says it was very consistent somewhere between here and there. I'm not into having my kilt mid-thigh mid at all, so that's not my game, but it might be yours. I like mine just at the top of my kneecap. So in that case, I sit so two-thirds of my thigh are covered with the kilt because when I lay back, you'll see my body, what happens with my body. So I lay that lay down. Now, the bottom of the kilt hem should be right around where my knees are. And then I simply pull my right under apron over. You may have noticed I destroyed one of the pleats doing that, but that's okay. And then I bring this edge to basically touching essentially the bed, touching the other side. And then I arrange that nice and neat. As a note, it is much easier to arrange this whole thing when you're lying down than when you're standing up. And then this side, over, again, taking the edge, lying up to, as neatly as you want, making this edge come over to the edge of the bed. Right. So now I have it, take my fabric belt, just kind of tense your abs, pull up your lower back, pass it under, and I cinch it kind of at the top of my iliac crest in my hips. Okay. So I'm going to be using this mirror over here. So when you are standing up, if you've done it well, you probably won't have to do much at all with it. So now's the time to look at your pleating job. And I've done okay. I've done better in the past, but that's not too bad. Um, so make sure that you can see the back here because now what I'm going to do, and I'm gonna be talking this other way for a moment, is I need to find a line that will sit at the bottom of the belt, right? So I've loosened the belt a little bit, just a bit though, I don't wanna lose everything. And Roughly, that seems to be okay. Now it's just about detail. So a couple things I've learned. Traditional kilts, as, wear, as most people wear them today, tend to sit higher. Um, I think that's that might be a reflection of Victorian styling. Um, part of it could be representative of where it wants to sit on your body. But I have found that with, with, the, um, with the big kilts, the, the belted plates, I like them to sit lower, actually on my hips. They just, it feels better. Um, I have some minor compression issues in my lower back and when I wear it higher it compresses into my back more so I let it sit more a little lower and allow my pelvic girdle to shoulder some of the burden. So here we go. As you can see it's not too bad. It's not perfect. It's because I'm making a video that is not perfect. If, it were, if I weren't making a video this would this would be perfect. But you can see it's not too bad. If you're ever concerned about how they look you can just take your hand like this and just kind of clean them up a little bit. See, there's some kinks over here. 
So that's not too bad. Now's the time, depending on your sense of neatness, if you feel like tucking in your shirt a little better, because it tends to move around. Okay. So that's not too bad. Um, at this point now, this is what a lot of people have been asking about. What do I do with the rest of this? If I want this to go over my shoulder, then it's actually really easy. Just take the bottom apron, turn the fringe side just in to make it neater, just tuck it around my back, and do the same thing with the other one. Take the bottom, turn the fringe in a bit just to make it a bit neater, and then wrap it around and just stick it in the back. This is okay. However, you might notice there's a lot of weight in the back. This is where the other belt's going to come in handy. If I wanted to, I could take this big three inch leather belt that I got from Ravenswood Leather and wrap it around. However, you might notice in a moment, it's not that neat. It's kind of messy, so I don't do that. But one thing I could do is take both ends and tie them up over my shoulder. So this would have been very common, especially if you're walking around and you're an underbrush or heather or whatever you could be walking through. This is handy, right? It takes your blanket out of the way. Um, many people love to use these Pananula brooches. This in particular is a gorgeous one that was a gift to me. This other one is far more plain, right? And so people often will use these to pin your play together. Those had already fallen out of fashion by hundreds and hundreds of years in the Highlands by the time the Belt of Plague came along. So the evidence that we have indicate those were not used, but instead they often just tied it. So I have a piece of like cotton twill tie um, tape and I just make a loop and just tie it up and we're all good to go, right? And this could be used for all sorts of things. You can also take your, you know, un undo the back, right? So just kind of reset to zero, come back to home, so to speak. Take the two ends, tie them together. Take the long back, put it over your head, and you've got kind of a hoodie now, and you know, so you're kind of wrapped up in, in tartan, and I'm sure I look ridiculous, but I suspect if I was out in the cold and the drizzle and the rain, this probably wouldn't be too bad. You take the hoodie off and then you just have it as a as basically a big shirt like keeping you warm. Um, obviously I don't walk around town looking like that. <laughs> I might hang out on my porch like that if it's cold but so undo the knot let the ends drop. Now what I do is once this is back to being home being just you know ground zero and it's kind of neat so this gets kinked up sometimes I have to fix that. Right. So here's my belt. So there we go. Right? And um, if it's a chilly evening or, or if the bugs are getting to my legs, I'll wear it like this. No harm, no foul. It's very practical, certainly if it's chilly. Now, you'll have to look at the detail for this because this part's, um, I think, important for some folks. So again, take the bottom corner, flip the fringe in a bit. I used to be very concerned about neatness and making this perfect. I have since realized that's not necessary. It's hyper obsessive. So just flip it in somehow. Now, do this, fold it back on itself and take that whole unit, 
wrap it around and tuck it up, up into your belt. As such. So once again on this side, make it so the fringe end, fringed edge, excuse me, goes inward. Then just back on itself a bit and reach around, tuck it underneath your belt. Clean it up a little bit. Look in the mirror to make sure it's okay. Again, it's not perfect because I'm recording, so clearly it's not going to be perfect. But that's generally how I wear it. You can also do all sorts of things with these wings. You can make pockets out of them, double tuck them, you know, put stuff in them. You can make these looser to actually make room for pockets. I generally just wear it like this. Um, one thing to note, you'll see that the bottom hem of my kilt has actually risen a bit. I have found that uh, when I have it set up with just the fabric belt, it might look fine, but when I put on the heavier belt and make it a bit tighter, it pulls it up a bit. So just take that into, a, into account. Um, now at this point, I put my sparring on and off I go. Now again, normally this takes between five and six minutes. Clearly this has taken a lot longer than that. Um, and it's not as nice as it normally is, but this is generally how I do it. Um, you can also still do this type of thing right? But you notice that I can't bring it over my head. It's because the wide belt acts as a cinch belt as well. So it's taking up some of the fabric. So I can still wear it as a cloak as such. And I might be able to tie it. This might be able to get tied, but it's, there's not a lot of fabric, but I could do it, right? It's just because this belt takes up that extra space. Um, so I believe that's it. Um, thank you so very much for watching. Uh, ask me any questions you have. I don't know a lot, but I can share with what I know. Um, and I hope this answers all of the questions that people have. Thank you very much. Ihawai, I guess, Bonigi Saltis.